there. Welcome back to Chef Monica's Kitchen. Today we're going to make an awesome marinara sauce. Marinara seems like it would be easy, but I'm going to show you how to kick it up and jazz it up a little bit. And with that, we're going to serve spaghetti squash. The reason I'm picking spaghetti squash is because it's obviously healthier than regular pasta. Um, it's gluten-free. Um, it's got super great nutritious value. And additionally, it's vegetarian, so that's a win-win-win for everybody. And then we're going to throw some shrimp on there, so I'll show you how to jazz that up. So for ingredients, we've got our shallots. That's about three shallots that I sliced up. We've got fantastic garlic that I minced up nice and fine. We have our carrots and our celery, our mirepoix here. Uh, green peppers, I love to use green peppers in here to really brighten up the flavor a little bit. Mushrooms, mushrooms are our umami component. Umami is the fifth taste. They're sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. And the fifth one is umami. And it's basically, the best way to describe it is bacon, so our sort of meaty flavor. And then we've got our fresh herbs over here. We've got parsley, no cilantro, basil, and uh, sage. And then of course our tomatoes. I'm gonna show you how to peel and seed these guys here. For the spices, we've got fresh cracked pepper. I have your uh, pepper, or sorry, smoked paprika, nutmeg, uh, Herb de Provence, and these are the chili flakes. Salt, of course. We have a little olive oil and got to add a little booze, a little wine. And then in case the tomatoes are a little acidic, we're going to balance that out with a little bit of honey. First thing I want to talk about is our tomatoes. I went ahead and got fresh tomatoes from our local farm. Uh, what you need to do then is peel and seed these tomatoes. The way to peel them is to cover them in boiling water and leave them for about a minute or so. And then the peel will come right off. You can see how easily that comes right off. Oh, and it spritzes everywhere. That's even more fun. And then when I say seed, people sometimes don't know what I'm talking about with seeding it. So what I want to do is take my knife, cut off the end here, and then we're going to just quarter this just like that. And then you see how the seeds are sort of just right there. The reason I want to pull those out is I don't want those in the final product. I want it to be a nice smooth sauce. So we're going to pop all those seeds out of there, making sure to not lose too much of the tomato because I want all that meat in there. And then we'll just give this a, rush, a rough chop so that we can add that to our sauce later. Just like that. Lovely. That was my, not my greatest chopping technique, but you get the idea. Perfect, so now we're gonna go and make our sauce. So we're gonna get started putting together our sauce. I'm gonna put a little extra virgin olive oil to begin with here. I prefer cooking with extra virgin olive oil. It has a nice neutral flavor. And we'll throw in our shallots. I'm gonna let these go for just a couple of seconds here. You can hear it sizzle in the pan, that's what we want. Super yummy. I don't wanna go too long because I don't want them to burn. We'll add in our garlic. There's a significant quantity of garlic. And just remember, if you want really pumped up garlic flavor, you wanna chop your garlic up really, really fine. That will really activate all that flavor in there. Then, we'll add in our mirepoix, our celery. Make sure we get all that in there. And our carrots that we just chopped up a little bit. So we're building flavor, we're layering flavors here. We'll add in additionally our bell pepper that I chopped up there. Make sure you take the seeds out of that bell pepper. You don't want those in there, just like I didn't want the seeds from the tomatoes either. Give that a quick stir and see this already smells like heaven. If, in my version of heaven anyways. We've got our mushrooms. Chop those up. These are just simple button mushrooms. You could use any kind of mushroom you wanted to if you happen to have some good wild mushrooms like porcinis or creminis or chanterelles or morels if you happen to pick them. I'm not a mushroom hunter, but if you are, go ahead and use them. Lovely. All right, now we're gonna add our seasonings. We wanna do our kosher salt, a wee bit. You can always add more, but you can't take it out, so don't overdo it. Fresh cracked pepper, quite a bit. And now we're gonna boost up the heat here with our smoked paprika, our chili flakes, and our herbe de Provence. The herbe de Provence is a combination of thyme, savory, chervil, tarragon, lavender, marjoram, and rosemary. If you can remember all that, you get a gold star. And freshly grated nutmeg. Always, always grate your nutmeg fresh. It has the best flavor when it's fresh. Um, way better than the pre-grated stuff any day. And you need one of these handy dandy little microplane zesters. Quite a bit in there. Mushrooms love nutmeg. So if you're gonna cook mushrooms, you always wanna throw the nutmeg in there. Excellent, we're gonna give this a quick little toss. Holy cow, that already looks delicious. Okay, now, the vino, a little leftover wine. Who has leftover wine? I know I don't usually, but open a new bottle and then you've got wine for later, right? 
This happens to be just a little Pinot Grigio. You could use any kind of white wine you wanted to. Preferably not a really oaky Chardonnay. And we're just gonna cook that until all the liquid has evaporated. Really concentrate the flavor there. And now we need to add in our tomatoes. We're gonna throw all of these in there. And the idea is that I want to make sure that I get all that liquid to evaporate. So these will cook down and stew down. It should take this approximately 20 minutes or so until all of that flavor has concentrated, the tomatoes have cooked down, the carrots are cooked through, and then all that gorgeousness will get pureed up together and that will be the best marinara sauce you've ever had in your whole darn life. So our spaghetti squash I roasted, and I'm gonna pull those out and show you what to do with it. Uh, basically, here's what they look like. This, this was an enormous spaghetti squash. I got it from the local farm and it was quite large. So I went ahead and actually cut it in thirds, uh, just cut the ends off and then split it in thirds and then scooped out the seeds. And then once they're done, this is what's so cool about spaghetti squash, it will shred like spaghetti. It actually looks like noodles and it'll sop up that sauce just like regular noodles do. So we'll go ahead and actually pop that in our bowl here. I don't know if you can see that there. Lovely. Isn't that awesome? And it smells divine. And we'll do that with all three pieces here. That gets tossed with our marinara sauce and topped with our shrimps and we'll be good. So for the shrimp, make sure you buy peeled and deveined shrimp because peeling and deveining shrimps is a huge pain in the butt. So these are already uh, thawed and make sure you buy them frozen. Unless you live near a body of water where they're actually getting them fresh, you're better off thawing them when you're ready for them and buying them frozen when they were flash frozen. And I'm gonna season these fairly simply. A little bit of kosher salt, fresh cracked pepper, and then I'm gonna actually put a little bit of Ras El Hanout spice, which is the Moroccan spice blend. Literally translates to top of the shop and it has like 44 different spices in it. I love a Ras El Hanout on my seafood and also on chicken. So this is a great time to utilize that spice. And then these cook super fast. A Little bit of olive oil in the pan. Make sure you get that pan up and hot here. And those literally will cook up in probably two or three minutes or so minute or two per side, that's it. And I'm gonna deglaze them with just a little bit of white wine. That is gonna lend a little acidity. It'll scrape off all those good bits off the bottom of the pan and it'll also kind of finish cooking them up because an acid will always cook off your protein. Pop these puppies in there. Should be scorching hot. There they are. Lovely. Okay, so those have been in the pan for about a minute or so. We're gonna flip them over. And then at this point, once I've got them flipped, whoops, that guy didn't wanna cooperate. We'll go ahead and take our white wine there and deglaze the pan. Stand back in case of fire. Lovely. And that just glistens up there. Finish them off and those are ready to go onto our spaghetti squash. That's it, turn it off. So this is now done and it's thickened up really nicely. We wanna finish it off with our fresh herbs and you wanna put those in at the very end so that they don't cook. You want them just to brighten up the flavor in the end. Pop all those in there, stir them in. And of course, like I said, we're gonna add some honey in there to balance out the acidity. Oftentimes you'll see restaurants will put in uh, sugar, but I prefer honey, it's a natural sweetener. And plus I get honey from a local organic farm and I know that their honeybees are feeding off of really good quality flowers, so. Perfect. Now we're gonna turn this puppy off. Time to puree it all together. Are you ready? This is my big bad immersion blender. It's bigger than I am and it's badder than I am. So we're gonna pop this puppy in here and I'm still figuring out how to use it. If you don't have an immersion blender at home, you could put this into your food processor once it's cooled or you could put it into a Vitamix if you happen to have one of those as well. Otherwise, 
Immersion Blender works great because you can do this while it's hot, which is better. Perfect, we're gonna go ahead and toss this all together. I'll show you the final product. Alrighty, so we're gonna take some of our spaghetti squash here. Just a nice little helping in the center of our plate. Might as well make it look pretty. And since it's so healthy for us, we can have a bigger serving. That's what I'm saying. That's my theory anyways. And then we'll take our wonderful pasta sauce. Just add a little of that on top here. Yum. That smells like heaven. And then we'll grab our little shrimps. This is the hungry man version, hungry man portion. We're gonna give you not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six shrimps to eat. Beautiful. And then I wanna hit this with some freshly grated Parmesan. Really good quality Parmesan. Awesome. Tell me that doesn't look delicious. Tell me you don't wanna eat it, cause you'd be lying. I'm gonna give it a quick taste, cause it's chef's prerogative. Little of the squash, little of the parm, little of the sauce, a little shrimp. That is a huge bite. I don't know if I can eat that much, but we'll try. Mm. You're gonna love it. Go home and make it like now, like yesterday. And tune in, I'll pop this uh, recipe onto Facebook. So like us, the Chestnut Street Inn on Facebook and follow us on our website, www.chestnut-in.com and stay tuned next time for another episode of Chef Monica's Kitchen.